Imagine this. Let's say you want to set up a small satellite of some kind in low Earth orbit. Since we're in the 21st century, chances are that your selected mode of transport would be via rocket. Unfortunately, NASA does not want to support your endeavor. Taking matters into your own hands, you decide to make the rocket yourself. So, how do you make a rocket? Of course, you need a rocket engine, perhaps a compartment to put your payload in, maybe some tanks to store your propellant. Hey, speaking of which, how much propellant do you need? In the year 1903, Russian scientist Konstantin Tsiolkovsky derived an equation that can answer this very question. The equation looks something like this. This equation is called the Tsiolkovsky rocket equation. It can also be called as a classical rocket equation, the ideal rocket equation, or sometimes just the rocket equation. Yeah, but what the heck does it mean? Well, okay, then let's figure out what each variable stands for. On this side of the equation is delta v. It tells us the change in velocity the rocket can make. On the other side, we have exhaust velocity, which is how fast the propellant is expelled backwards relative to the rocket. m sub i, standing for initial mass, is the total mass of the rocket before firing the engine. m sub f, standing for final mass, is the total mass of the rocket after firing the engine. From a glance, what can this equation tell us? What does it imply? For one, it tells us that it actually doesn't matter how much propellant we bring. What matters is the proportion between the propellant mass and the total mass of the rocket. Yeah, that's cool, but where did the equation come from? Hmm, valid question, but a small warning, this may get a little mathematical. According to Newton's second law of motion, we know that the sum of the forces acting on an object is equal to the mass of the object times its acceleration. Let's move the mass to the other side. We also know that acceleration is the derivative, or rate of change, of velocity. Therefore, velocity is also the antiderivative of acceleration. With a little substitution, we should get this equation. The force on a rocket is equal to the thrust of the engine, which is equal to the exhaust velocity multiplied by the mass flow rate, which is how much propellant is ejected per second. We know that the mass of a rocket constantly changes because it's constantly ejecting propellant. We can write mass as a quantity that changes with time, defined with this function. Of course, T stands for time. Let's say that the time interval would be from 0 to delta T, which would be how long we turn the engine on for. With a little integration magic, we should end up with this equation. This denominator here could be thought of as the mass of the rocket after the burn. Hence, we can change this to final mass. And, well, there we go. There's our equation. Why should I care? This equation captures the essence of rocketry in a simple equation. With a simple equation, you can determine whether your rocket can successfully go to space or not. With a simple equation, you can determine how much payload you could send to space. With just a simple equation, as Tsiolkovsky originally intended when he first derived the equation, we learned that there was hope for humanity to reach the stars.